Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyArmMarketing.com. In this video, we're gonna talk about contact scoring in Active Campaign. Now, contact scoring is great because it lets you give your subscribers points for doing certain actions. So for example, maybe opening an email or clicking a link in your email or buying a product or service, and you can give your subscribers points for these types of actions. And then based off of how many points people have, you know how warm or hot they are as a lead or a subscriber. So maybe you wanna reach out to them, call them, make them special offers, things like that. So by using contact score, you can get a measure of who's hot and who's not. So here's a little breakdown of how you can go about scoring your contacts. Now this is not the Bible or anything like that. This is just a concept and something that you may need to change and mold to fit your business. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So how I break it down typically is based off of different actions and how I want to go ahead and score them. So we have, you know, the typical subscriber actions, you know, opening an email, click a link in an email, replies to an email, views a sales page or views a checkout page or purchases a product. And so these are the typical actions, you know, your customers go through. And so in doing those different actions, you can go ahead and give them different scores. So maybe opening an email is just a one point, clicking a link in an email is three points, replies five, view sales page 10, checkout page 20, purchase a product at 100 points. And so of course, the more actions that they do, the more points they get. And of course, the, the warmer or hotter they get. And then you can also set expiration dates for your points as well. So maybe for opening emails, clicking links, and replying to emails, you set the expiration date at 90 days. So that way, over the course of 90 days, they have some time to actually build up some score and some points right there. But viewing a sales page or a checkout page, you know, that's kind of more of an immediate thing. People don't usually view a sales page or a checkout page unless they're about to buy something. So if they don't buy something within 14 days, you know, they're probably not going to. And so at that point in time, you probably want to go ahead and remove those points. And then of course, purchasing a product, you know, that might be the holy grail. And so you might give them 100 points and never expire because, you know, they're a buyer. And another strategy, like if you have multiple products and services, maybe you don't do a product purchase of 100 points. Instead, you might do like points based off of the different products that they buy. So if it's initial, you know, $10 product, maybe it's 25 points. If they purchase an upsell or something, an upgrade, maybe it's 50 points. And then maybe if they purchase your full coaching service, then it's 100 points. So those are just a few ideas of when you can go ahead and give people points. Now, also, I want to point out that there's no limit to the number of points people can get. Like you can have it go up to 1,000 if you want to or 10,000. However, based on experience, it's best to try and stay around 100 points because otherwise you can start to become meaningless and cumbersome and all that stuff. So even though Active Campaign lets you go over 100 points, try and stay, you know, around 100 points. And then of course you could go ahead and categorize your leads and subscribers based off of their points. So maybe anybody with 50 or more points is a warm lead and then anybody with over 100 points is a hot lead. So now let's head over to Active Campaign and set some of this stuff up. So come into Active Campaign and we want to come into contacts. And we also want to come into scoring right here. So we need to go ahead and set up our scoring. Now Active Campaign came with two different lead score rules already pre-installed, but we're going to ignore them. And I'm going to come up here to add a score in the top right hand corner. And we're going to be using a contact score right here. I'll have another video on deal score, but we'll do it in contact score. And we can go ahead and rename it. So I'm going to go ahead and call this engagement and save. And now we need to go ahead and add a rule right here. So let's go ahead and add a new rule. And in this case, I'm just gonna do subscribes or is subscribed to a list, at least one list. Then we'll go ahead and click on save. And let's go ahead and change this to one point right here. We'll do one point instead of 10 points because 10 points is too much just to subscribe to a list. Pretty much everyone's on a list if they're in your active campaign account. And so we're just gonna give them one point, but we needed to set up this rule in order to establish the engagement scoring element that we're setting up here. And one thing to note right here is rules only run once per each contact. So use automations to add or subtract repeating point value. So we're gonna be using automations to, to do the rest of our ruling, but we needed to set up a baseline rule in order to like get this whole process started. So that's what we're doing here, just setting up the engagement scoring option and this one rule right here. And now we can go ahead and turn this active. And now we can go ahead and set up automations that add to our subscriber score. So let's come over to automations now and let's go ahead and create a brand new automation. So top right corner, create an automation. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll do one for opening an email. So that's a simple one. So let's go ahead and start from scratch and continue. And we need to select our trigger. So open slash reads an email, select that option. And we'll go ahead and select the standard campaign option. And then we can do any email, any list, and we want it to run multiple times because we want it to add to their score every time they do it. And so that's why we want it to run multiple times and we're not gonna do any sort of segmentation right here. So I'll click add start. And then what we need to go ahead and do is come down to contacts here and we're going to adjust a contact score. So select this option. And we need to go ahead and select our score that we wanna adjust. We're adjusting our engagement score. 
and we wanted to add one point for an email open. So one point, let's go ahead and change that to one. And expiration, we're gonna go ahead and do a 90 day expiration on these email clicks. So we're gonna go ahead and click on save. So now anytime a contact reads any email, they're gonna get one point added to their contact score engagement. Let's go ahead and name this automation. So I've got contact score engagement reads email, and then we wanna go ahead and make sure that this automation is active, so we'll turn it active. And let's come back out of here and go on and create another automation real quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually clone this automation. We'll come here and copy. And yes, I wanna go ahead and copy it. Now I know it's a simple automation and then I could rebuild it from scratch pretty easily, but we'll go ahead and just copy. So edit automation. And let's come back to our list over here. So we have clicks a link in the email. So same concept, we'd come in here and we can click on back and back and in this case we'd go ahead and do clicks a link and an email and a standard campaign so any email any list and we'd want it to run multiple times and save start and then we'd go ahead and change this to adding three points to our score and they expire in three months and save and of course we could go ahead and rename this one to clicks link and save and then we would go ahead and turn this one active as well so now we have two automations that are adding to our engagement score. Let's come back out to the automations real quick and we'll go through some of these other ones. So the next one we would do is replies to email and it's the same concept as the other ones. You would just change your trigger to replies to email and instead of adding three points or one point, you'd go ahead and add five points. But let's come down to the view sales page one because this is a little bit different. So I'll come down here and I'm still gonna go ahead and duplicate it. So we'll go ahead and copy it. And yes, copy. And I'm gonna go ahead and change the trigger. So we'll click on here and come back and back. And we want to go web page is visited. So we'll select that option right here. And then we need to go ahead and select the web page URL for our sales page or sales pages. So you can use that asterisk for a wild card. So depending how your website's set up, you might be able to use a wild card or you might have to create multiple triggers for all your different sales pages. Just depends on how everything's set up on your site. But anyway, I have my sales page right here. It's at book. So I'll do crazy eye.marketing slash book. So we'll come over here and put that in there like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this up to run multiple times as well. So that way if somebody comes to my sales page, you know, three times they're gonna get 30 points added to their score. And that's something that I wanna go ahead and see. So we'll do multiple times and I'm not gonna segment the contacts entering this automation. We'll go ahead and save start. All right, so they visit this page, crazy.marketing slash book. And I wanna go ahead and add 10 points to their score. And I think I changed this one to 14 days. So we'll go ahead and change this to 14 days and we'll click on save. And I'm actually gonna make some changes to this automation real quick. So what I don't want is somebody coming to my sales page and clicking refresh like 20 times or something like that and then getting a score of 200 points. So let's go ahead and reconfigure this automation so it prevents people from getting a whole bunch of points by clicking refresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a wait here. So wait and we're just gonna wait for one day or one hour, I'm sorry. So that way, if they click refresh within that hour, they'll still only be in this automation one time. But if like four hours pass by and they go back to the sales page, well then it would add the 10 points to their score. Now I also need to go ahead and update this trigger as well. And we're gonna go ahead and segment the contacts entering this automation. And we're gonna do automation and is not currently in automation and they're not currently in our view sales page automation. So we'll go ahead and save start and let's go ahead and look at this again. So right now it says contact visits page crazyeye.marketing slash book and they're not currently in the automation. Contact score engagement view sales page, which is this automation that we're working on right now. Well, then they'll go ahead and they'll get 10 points to their score and then they're gonna go ahead and wait an hour before they drop out of this automation and they could re-enter it again and again and again. So this is how I'd go ahead and configure the automations that are triggered by page visits because people do some weird stuff with their browsers with refreshing and stuff. You don't wanna accidentally count somebody a whole bunch of times when you really didn't mean to. So anyway, this is what it would look like and we'll go ahead and turn that active. Now the same concept would apply to like my checkout page. So they're on my sales page and then they go to my checkout page, which is kind of like adding the product to the cart. Well, that would have a similar automation as this because it would also be a page view. So the concepts in this automation remain the same. And then we have like a purchase product automation. So let's come back out here. And I already set up a purchase product automation, but we could come down here. And so I have my purchase sales funnel book automation right here. I could go ahead and add or adjust the score straight from within this automation. So let's go ahead and add a score increase. So we'll go ahead and adjust the contact score. 
and engagement and we'll add what was it we'll just say 25 to their score and it'll never expire and we'll click on save so of course you can go ahead and add points in your regular automations as well you don't have to create special contact score automations alrighty so that's how you go ahead and set up those automations right there now what can we do with the scores so you can create an automation that is triggered by a score so let's go ahead and create a brand new automation and we'll go ahead and start from scratch and continue. And for our trigger, we want to go ahead and select score changes. So score changes right down here. And then we have our engagement one that we set up. So engagement right there. Changes to above, let's say, you know, 99. So that would put them at 100, you know, before it would trigger, which would be our hot leads category. So then we have that. And we could run it once or multiple times, whichever one makes you happy. I'm going to do once. And we'll go ahead and add start. And so maybe in this case, we want to go ahead and send them an email like free coaching call where we offer them, you know, a 30 minute consultation or something like that, because they're obviously a hot lead. They're engaging with things. Maybe they're buying products or services and their score jumped up to 100. Well, now it's time to reach out to them and be like, hey, you got any questions or anything like that? You want to buy my super expensive coaching service, etc." So you could go ahead and send them an email inviting them to your calendar or whatever it might be. And we'll just do save and design later. And let me go ahead and name this automation. So yeah, contact score changes to above 99. Send them an email offering them a free coaching call. And of course, we'd go ahead and turn that active. So now this automation will automatically fire off anytime somebody's score gets over 100. And so that's something you can do with these different scores. Another thing you can do with the scores is go ahead and create segments of your people based off of their score. So we can come back over to contacts and lists and create a segment just like normal. Now I have another video on segments if you need help with it, but we'll go through it quickly as well. So here I am clicking on segments and we'll go ahead and do a new segment and we'll call this one hot leads and create segment. And I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it works on all my different lists that I have. And in this case, we're gonna search for enga engagement. So we have engagement is greater than or equal to 100. So that is my engagement score right there is greater than or equal to 100. We can go ahead and click on save. And now I have a segment of all my hot leads that have scores over 100. And of course I could go ahead and create another segment where they have scores from 50 to 99 and they'd be my warm leads you know, based off of my categorization right here. And then maybe when I'm doing broadcast emails or something like that, I could send to these particular segments and whatever else it might be that I'm trying to accomplish. So those are just a couple of different ideas based off of the different scores. And finally, if you came over to contacts and you clicked on this little gear icon in the top right hand corner, you can scroll on down and you should see like I have engagement right there. So if I click on that, I can see the engagement option and I could go ahead and sort my contacts based on their score as well. So if I need like a full list of people and their scores, then I could come here and do that and, you know, get whoever my hottest contacts or hottest leads are right here listed out for me. And so that's just a couple different ways you can go ahead and use those scores. And that's how contact scoring works within Active Campaign. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate it. Switch the likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out crazyoutmarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.